listening to the On Call Empath Show. All right, guys, we are back. I wanted to change it up a little bit here at the On Call Empath. I wanted to read a email that uh, I received recently from somebody that uh, is going through some problems dealing with their triggers. This episode, I'm going to be talking about five techniques to deal with your emotional trauma, especially after leaving or going non-contact from manipulation, a narcissist, or somebody that has, uh, you know, abused you for many years. So without further ado, let me go ahead and jump right into this email and then see if you can resonate with that. So all the empaths and highly sensitive people that are having issues with dealing with your traumas, this is definitely an episode you don't want to miss. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Dear Raj, thank you so much for doing the work that you're doing. I've been going through some separation from a past narcissist that I left. I have gone no contact and this became a huge trigger right after a few weeks. I've noticed I started having a lot of problems dealing with life. I depended on this person for everything and they let me down. Now, whenever I go out, I don't feel like going out very long, driving, Uh, going outside my comfort zone. These are all things that I have daily problems with. So I wanted you to give me some advice how I can manage with all this, all these triggers. The last three days I had slept alone and been in my home and I haven't gone anywhere. Is this something I should be worried about? I'm feeling the chains of anxiety and I'm having a hard time breaking this. Thanks again for all you do. And I hope to hear from you soon. All right, guys. So in this episode, um, what I'm going to talk about is the five uh, techniques that uh, just about anyone could use. I mean, definitely empaths, you know, that's mostly the clients that I um, coach, but then I have the average person who has been, you know, decades of abuse. And then they come to me um, asking for guidance and how to go on and have a, uh, you know, normal life and start doing things they used to love. And let me tell you guys, recovery is possible. I've seen it. I have many clients that um, have been in the same shoes. So just know when you are leaving a relationship in the beginning, the first couple of weeks might be amazing. But then um, what I normally find is like, eventually after that initial period, there's a time where you start to regress and you start to think about um, the past and how that person, you know, how you left them. um, And you start to get, some people get trauma bonded where they start missing that person, even though that um, it's the idea of missing them, not that person particularly. So number one, and I'm going to start off with number one is being present. Now, I know you hear this and I hear a lot of people talk about being present. What does that mean? How do we become present? What I tell my clients is when you go, when you're thinking about the past or the future, it's going to make you not focus on what's important right now, what you have control in this moment. So I directly tell them, let those negative thoughts or those scary thoughts come in but don't judge them. Uh, Meaning don't try to uh, control them. Don't try to analyze them. It's kind of like the skies. Uh, You see all these stars behind me, like sometimes they'll pass, you know, and the next day, you know, they may be there, they may not. And so I use this as an analogy because I am very big on just observing and not, uh, you know, trying to dissect what it means. So being present is just watching your thoughts. So that's why we're, when you write stuff down, it's very powerful. Um, If you don't, if you can't write them down, just constantly think about just looking from a third party's perspective, which is very hard in the beginning, I'll admit. But a lot of my clients, I will have them, you know, train themselves to look at what's going on? What's, what's the questions that they're asking? Like, will I be alone forever? Will I ever find anybody? These questions, I want you just to observe, where are they coming from? So just be present. Number two is the root cause going back 
all the way to your childhood. So even before the past relationship with this narcissist or whoever that you're having a problem um, dealing with, especially going non-contact, possibly that's not the main issue. The main issue is like maybe you had uh, some toxic parents growing up. Um, you didn't trust people. Maybe you got hurt in previous relationships. There is one person that uh, started this and, or maybe a group of people um, that kept doing the same things as, as empaths. We tend to be people pleasers and keep going back to these toxic relationships because that's how, that's all we know. And we want to put our best face forward and be accepted and all this. So it may not just be that person. It could be something that happened maybe 20 years ago, maybe even when you were a child. So I coach a lot of people and we go back all the way and do inner child work. And when I say inner child work, we talk to the actual like person that was being abused. So like, if you were like, you know, walking around and you're feeling triggered, I would tell them to start talking to their inner child, telling them that you're not going to let anything happen to them. You're going to protect them. And I know it's, it's hard to, to do this in the beginning, but I will actually tell all my clients to start talking to that little boy or that little girl, because that is you think about this. If you had a kid and somebody came up and just, you know, hit them, abuse them, would you be upset? Would you like try to intervene? Would you be like, stop doing that? So why not do that for that child, which is essentially you? So once you can kind of put the two together, if you can protect somebody else or another child, you need to protect your own, your, your, uh, your inner child, your authentic self, the person that's, that you're going to be. So inner work is, is very important, especially with a lot of my clients. Uh, we spend a lot of time developing this. They actually talk out loud and then they, they are talking to a, a person or a baby or a child, but we are talking with compassion and love. And that's something that they never got growing up. And that's a huge part of managing your triggers. You are going to be the protector. You are going to um, basically shield this person from all the negative people the narcissists, the manipulators, the toxic people. So keep that in mind. Number three is your belief system. Um, and I've talked about this in several different episodes. And I've had a lot of top elite guests talk about changing your thoughts. This has probably got to be like one of the harder things to do because once you're wired from, you know, uh, childhood that you're you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not handsome enough, or whatever, you know, you have uh, some sort of uh, inadequacy, whether it's your weight, or you're not, you're embarrassed about something, that's when you start to kind of let your, your emotions get ahead of you. So to reprogram that, you have to start doing the work and asking yourself, where is this coming from? Is this coming from somebody that hurt you before? Is this coming from an employer possibly, or a boyfriend or girlfriend, um, somebody that abused you? Where is the origin? Once you can locate that, then we are going to dissect that person. Who is this person? Are they, are they a negative person? Do they lift you up or do they put you down? Do they, um, are they good for you? Or are they toxic for you? Once we can identify where it's coming from and who the source is, I always tell people, in order for someone to um, offend you, you have to respect them. So if somebody's telling you something and you don't respect them, then it doesn't matter what they say. They just don't count. And once my clients really take that in consideration, that's when they can go out and ask for what they want. They, they people please less. They don't care what the other person is going to think, because again, you have to respect somebody to actually uh, take in consideration what their opinion is of you as a person. And I had, I had the same issue here. Like, I mean, when I started this podcast, like, so I was wondering, like, um, you know, I don't like my voice. I, I don't think I'm going to get very far, you know, fast forward, you know, almost 150 episodes. Like now I just don't give a shit. Like if you don't like my content, you know, you can go harass somebody else. I'm not, 
I'm here only for my people, the empaths, the highly sensitive people, the trauma victims, the people that can actually extract the value and be a better version of themselves. So some people may not agree with a lot of the stuff that I say, and that's fine. I can respect that. But then once they cross the line and then they put you down for, you know, working on your, your vision, your dreams, that's when, you know, I, that's when I started breaking down who's the source. This person's probably very, you know, they're, they've probably had a hard life. They probably have low self-esteem and I actually start to feel sorry for them. And so I want you to think about that. So when, once you start thinking about that, your belief system starts to slowly change my little minute ways. Like you'll start to change your thoughts. Like, yeah, you know what? I am good at this. You know what? I am good at, uh, you know, helping people and listening and things like that. So you're not all failure. And that's what I tell a lot of my clients is, Where's the proof? You have to ask for the proof. If you think you're a certain way and, and, and it leads to trigger, where's the proof in that? I mean, you're not going to ask your friends. I mean, you can, but where's the proof that you're saying that this is absolute black and white thinking? So that's what I want you to ask yourself. So that's when the belief system changes. That's when you'll see it in your voice, in your, the way you come across, the way you talk. All of that will start changing slowly and it takes time. That's what I tell all my clients. Number four, act as if. Act as if you are already there. If you are triggering, if you are triggered and you feel like you'll never get into a relationship, if you're triggered and you start talking down and being negative and start saying that you're no good, I want you to picture that you've already made it. You're already in that relationship. And I want you to take it a step further too. And I do this with my clients. I make sure that they send this to me where they write down as detailed as possible what it looks like. Who is that person? What color is their hair? What kind of house do you live in? What color is the house? What part of town is it that in? You know, give me exact specifics. Give me a dollar amount. I want to know the details. Once you can see that visually and you can write it down, I can tell you that it's going to shift your belief system, which I just talked about, but you're going to act as if, and there's something to say, fake it till you make it. But this is goes farther than that, because when you're triggered and you start getting anxiety and panic, for example, I used to hate flying, you know, right before I got on, you know, in the gate and I started walking towards that tunnel into the aircraft, I would freak the hell out. Like what is going on? This is going to crash. I, I saw me going to the ocean. I wasn't going to make it. I was breathing hard, sweating. But how did that change? I saw myself lying on a beach, landing, having fun, having a margarita around with my awesome friends. When I focused more on that than rather than the plane going into the ocean, my brain changed like right then. And I mean, obviously I had to, you know, test it and action, put action into it and, and push myself and so I tell all of my clients, a lot of you guys that are listening, are my clients, go into the fear, run into it, let it happen. The more you try to avoid it, the, the worse it's going to get. So I always tell people uncertainty, being uncomfortable, running towards the fear, that's what's going to make the biggest difference. And in the beginning, um, obviously we take baby steps, but we take small baby steps towards that. So maybe if you're afraid of being in a relationship with another person that's going to hurt you, maybe maybe not be in a relationship, maybe be good to yourself, maybe talk to that inner child and do your work and talk to somebody that could help you first and then get into a relationship. Or as this person was having problems driving, you know, they're going out of their you know, comfort zone, I would tell them to just get in the car, sit there for, you know, five, 10 minutes and then go back in. That step in itself does something to our brain where we make connections. The next step would be getting back in the car the next day, driving maybe around the block and then parking and going back in. The next day after that, you're going across the street. The next day after that, you're going a little farther and so on and so forth. And before you know it, you're driving cross country. You know, so I mean, these are all examples. Um, so the fifth and final um, ways to deal with emotional triggers 
And this is probably one of the biggest ones that helped me get where I am today is having a good support system. And when I say a good support system, I mean a good group of friends, a coach, me, a therapist, somebody that has your back that could tell you how it is. I mean, I got a lot of Facebook friends and inter, you know social media people. I can ask their opinions all day long. But at the end of the day, I have maybe a handful of people that I know if I ask them something, they're going to tell me the truth. They're not going to sugarcoat it. But they also have my back. They're going to say stuff that I don't want to hear, but they're still on my side. And that's what I tell a lot of my clients is, you know, one of the things where this name comes from, the on-call empath, a lot of you guys don't know this, the word on-call, meaning I'm always, you know, on-call, meaning you can get a hold of me. And so I make that commitment to all of my clients that if they're going through a hard time and, you know, you need some, someone to talk to like really soon, I'm talking less than 24 hours. I am, I am basically, I am at service as on a call to help that person because you can't, the next day, you're not going to, you're not going to need that help or the next week you're going to be, you're not going to be in the same state. Hopefully you need help at that moment you need help within a couple hours and so i make that happen as the on-call empath where you can have a way where you can get a hold of me and um i think that's very important because when you're having these triggers you need someone of reason you need somebody to bring you back down to reality and you don't have time to wait to make an appointment um but in a case where you're having like severe triggers and you need to just talk to somebody you're not going to be able to do that. And that's where I feel like where I come in as the on-call empath. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I'm telling you guys here, going through the five, five uh, steps here, calm you down, bring you back to baseline and start having you ask those questions. Give me the proof. Are you talking to your, your inner child? Are you um, reaching out to the right people? Who are you, who are you friends with? Because Nine times out of 10, the people you hang around with, you become. So if they're negative, if they're always putting you down, guess what? You're going to feel like shit. So being people, be, being around people that lift you rather than put you down is huge. Even if you have to deal with people that are negative, but there's no way around it. Keep it limited. Keep it one word answers and then leave. If you have so-called friends that, that you have to deal with that you can't get out of, great. You just, you don't, you keep your distance. And so the people that you want to, you know, associate with are the people that are going to help you in your journey. So I hope you guys got something out of this um, episode. I'm going to start having more of these, um, you know, uh, these types of episodes. I know that in the past, I've always had a guest and a lot of you guys have been writing in about my coaching and how you can get a hold of me. I am taking new clients, so check in the bio. I'd love to work with you. I am giving a free session, so if you can uh, click the link in the bio, um, I will be happy to uh, do a free session with you just to see if you're a good fit, and I'd love to work with you. So with that said, stay tuned for the next episode, um, and always remember, you know, this, all of this stuff that I'm saying is not medical advice, Definitely, if you're having any mental health issues or you need to see a doctor, definitely go see one. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm reaching out to the clients that I work with, the people that are writing in, the people that have um, problems from narcissist abuse, past issues from you know abuse from you know family members, toxic parents, um, so on and so forth, trauma bond, all these subjects. So keep that in mind. And I want to thank you guys so much for coming with me on this journey. I started off with one episode and now we're almost uh, getting to 200. I got coach, uh, coaching clients from all over the world. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in um, and all my loyal listeners. You guys know who I am. So thank you so much for all the love and support and stay tuned for the next episode. I'm going to have some pretty big names uh, coming on this podcast. And um, again, feel free to reach out and always keep moving forward. 
With that said, we are out. You're listening to the On Call Impact.